The term segment of one has been around a while, but it's not often done for real. Segment of one is where every customer in a database of millions can be treated in a different way. Instead of this, what I mostly see is classic customer segmentation, where thousands of customers are in the same group. The segments might look like this, for example. Or maybe there will be RFM segments, recency, frequency, monetary, basically spending patterns. Maybe there'll be special purpose segments like new customers or high value customers. Maybe there'll be models that predict things like propensity to purchase or risk of churn. Now, most everyone agrees that it would be perfect if our communications were more like the owners of the local store from days gone by, who knew all their customers by name from childhood on up. So let's say we want to find out how to do that. So we do a Google search. Here I am scrolling through a Google search for segment of one. Now, most of the results seem out of date to me. So let's take all 59 results from page one and summarize them by the year published to see if my hunch is correct. Here are the results. As you can see, the distribution goes all the way back to 1989. That was the year that the World Wide Web was first proposed. And that's also the year that the Berlin Wall came down. It's been a while. And the median for that data set is 2016. That goes back a ways too. That was the year that the Chicago Cubs broke their 108 year curse and Pokemon Go was taking the world by storm. Aside from being crusty old, most of those results are also lightweight, short form content. They basically fall into three groups. One group kind of goes like this. Hey, there's this thing called segment of one. You should really think about that. Here are some examples of that type. Another group basically says, oh, that might be difficult to do. Better think twice. Here are some examples of that type. And the third group basically says, please click here on my contact us button so I can mark it to you. <laughs> here are some examples of that type. So in sum, Google search on this particular topic is mostly out of date and not very useful. But here's a guy who's actually figured out how to do this. His full name is very, very long, as you can see here on screen. But he goes by Ramsu for short. I'll leave a link to his LinkedIn profile in the comments. If you look him up, I think you'll quickly figure out that he's a really smart person. In fact, he's named on some very elite lists. And he's also a great guy. Ram Su started working on Segment of One quite a while back, and now he and that team over there have got the real thing running at scale. Since I know Ram Su, I understand the model, so I'll describe it for you now. First, we need an outcome we're trying to drive. In this model, the actionable metric that we're focused on is visit frequency. And the key to increasing that is for messages to be more relevant. So the framework targets relevance in order to increase visit frequency in order to drive revenue. That framework starts by looking for events. Events don't require a model. They're factual. You hit a purchase milestone or you're close to one, or this is an anniversary of your first purchase, things like that. 
These things are all personally relevant. So if we have them, we should use them as marketers on priority. Next, we have scores. Those come from our models, of course. You're likely to be interested in this particular product or offer. My model says that you might be at risk of churn, so I need to mitigate that risk. Things like that. But it's not so easy. One challenge is the cold start problem, which is that when a customer is new, we usually don't have enough information to be as relevant as we could be later on. But this is the start of a new relationship, so it's a real pity to start off on the wrong foot. Another challenge is Eclipse. This problem stems from the fact that at any given moment, about 70 to 80 percent of our customers have no events and also low scores on all our predictive models. So they end up getting generic communications, often with very low relevance. And that's when this model looks to what the team refers to as paths in order to fill in that gap. Here's how that works. First, we gather everything we know about the customer. It can be dozens or hundreds of variables, including imputed variables and customer segments and many other things. Next, we create strings of zeros and ones from that data. The primary reason for transforming that data into this form is for computational efficiency, and also because data in that form is well suited for matching our new customers with other similar ones. Those long strings of ones and zeros are called genomes. Next, we match each genome with those of similar customers who've already taken the next desired step in their journey with us, such as a second transaction, for example. And we use that information as the basis for what to talk about and when and what products and offers to suggest. I saw a target versus control for this, where the target got relevant messages using segment of one, and the control got the best performing discount offer the company had available at that time, which was performing well. Even so, the target responded better at full price because the products and offers were more relevant for them. So you can see that without segment of one, we'll probably make many bad guesses because we really don't understand who we're talking to. From what I understand, the clients over there are getting about a 5 to 7% incremental top line growth from using true segment of one. And apparently implementation is about four weeks because all the last mile communications stay in place as before. Overall, I'd say this seems worth looking into. So let me know if you'd like me to put you in touch with Ram Su or one of the other founders over there. Imagine the impact of going from this to this. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and see you next time.